All right, thank you guys for coming out here. This is going to be kind of a short and sweet talk. Uh, the purpose of the talk is to go through and uh, educate people how to get either more involved with open source intelligence in regards to the company that you're already working for or transitioning from where you are into an open source intelligence role. Uh, my name is Michael James. I am one of the founding members of OSINT Curious. I'm also the director of cyber intelligence and analytics for a company called Complex out of Virginia. Don't let that scare you. Um, so really, I, the, the reason why I wanted to go through and give this talk is because I do the OSINT Village every single year. Do we want to shut the door? Or can we do that? I, I, I don't care, but I just don't, I don't want to call it sound reverberation. Right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Ah, uh, peaceful wow. quiet. Uh, so, yeah, uh, like I said, I, I, I started my career in 2013 uh, with open source intelligence and getting into cyber. Uh, actually, in 2003, I discovered what open source intelligence was, and I was the first person in our financial group, because uh, I worked for a fintech, um, company out of Olathe that uh, started using social media to go through and investigate people for the purposes of risk, fraud, or either collection. Because we had to go through and do our own first party, third party collection. There's nothing like standing up beside somebody's house and stealing their car as a repo agent with them having a shotgun on their front doorstep. It's a, it's a good time. <laughs> So we wanted to mitigate some of that risk and by going to certain profiles and seeing what they're into, what their interests are, whether they're posting they have shotguns, it gives us a little bit of preparation before we go through and do anything. Uh, again, everything with OSINT that you do is uh, manage your scope, understanding what your role is, and then actually saying what you do before matters. So if you're going to go through and uh, pull out your scope and you know that it's something that you're going to be directly investigating, probably want to get a sock puppet between you and your target to merge that stuff. Uh, if it's something that you have to have direct relation or authentication, like a social media platform, or you have to have like a telephone number, like Telegram, um, it's something that you want to go through and maybe put some distance between your telephone number and a sock puppet telephone number. So all that being said, uh, I have a couple years experience in regards to doing some open source intelligence. Um, and what I really wanted to go through and do is kind of share my experience in regards to working for a fintech kind of company that had no business being in security, but we used open source intelligence to go through and to mitigate risk, fraud, other things like that. Um, and I actually started back in 2014, and I brought it to the attention of the people who were the executives at the time for the company. And I said, hey, I'm very interested in cybersecurity. I, I'm very interested in regards to attack service monitoring, passive threat landscape, all these type of things that are kind of evolving. And you, you've seen from 2014 to 22 what we're dealing with in regards to ransomware, malicious actors, phishing, things like that. Um, so I said, hey, with little to no budget, if you give us scope, direction, and time, we can actually go through and help do something, whatever you want to go through and do. And they said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, it's not what I want to do. What is it that we can go through and help you with? Remember, open source intelligence is always about answering a question that comes from leadership or a stakeholder. The reason why we do this job is to go through and not to use fun tools and be cool, but is to answer questions and help direct either budgets, roadmaps, or timelines in regards to what other people need to go through and accomplish. We're there to go through and solve problems and answer questions. We're not there to go through and make decisions or budgets. That's, that's leadership's uh, job there, right? <clears throat> so what we wanted to do was to, to reduce risk because we had an automated platform for, I think it, for, we, we did a lot of credit lines back in the day for this FinTech company. We would be essentially the guarantor for credit lines and they were unsecured credit lines for fuel or they were secure credit lines for like uh, big Best Buy and other commercial applications. Because we had the web platform, it was an automated, um, like, uh, kind of a, a form they would fill out and they would process it. And we had an SLA to go through and get them back with a result, whether they got the loan or whether they didn't get the loan or the line of credit, within 24 to 48 hours, I think it was. So it's a pretty fast turnaround to go through and to check on someone's credentials when they're spamming with a lot of the fraud investigation stuff. So what we did was we actually would run through public services like uh, credit bureau checks, uh, public search engines like uh, that's them and uh, true people search. Uh, we were able to go through and to identify and flag any of the accounts much quicker that would need either secondary runs or to go through and look at it as, uh, as, as an additional step of verification. Uh, at that point we would go through and tell them 
they need to go through and submit to like a phone screening or an SMS thing. And a lot of times that was enough to go through and put people off because they didn't want to go through and interact. So within seven months, we were able to drop fraud by 25% in two programs. So it was pretty impressive in regards to that stuff. How goes, guys? Is there, is there more? I'm just going. It's a whole train. Uh, so the, the, the point is that if you have the passion to go through and put open source intelligence kind of to its test there, then it doesn't matter what the goal is, but you have the ability inside your own organizations right now to go through and kind of talk to leadership. If you're in a security role, you can definitely go through and say, hey, we want to go through and spend five hours a week doing open source intelligence. What does that mean? We want to go through and develop a program to go through and answer a question. Because like I said, all open source intelligence is based upon what question are we trying to answer and who's the stakeholder or the leadership, right? So for those who just kind of joined, my name is Michael James. I'm one of the co-founders, or one of the original members and co-founders of OSINT.Curious. Ocean that's how it's, it's the, that's the domain. Um, I'm also the uh, director of cyber intelligence and analytics for a company called uh, Complex out of Virginia. Uh, and really, like I said, I just want to go through and kind of talk a little bit about what you can do today to go through and kind of get open source intelligence in regards to your, your corporate infrastructure. And again, it all kind of starts with, you can have all the tools, all the trainings, everything you need, but what are you, what's your scope? What, you, what are you actually trying to go through and either prevent, understand, or identify, right? It is, uh, it is very noble for a lot of people to go through and say, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm working for this company, we do widgets, uh, and I want to go through and monitor all the attack service. Good luck. Like one person doing something like that is not feasible. So scale back the actual scope of what you're trying to do, right? If you want to go through and build an asset list from an external vantage and then mark those things that would be drive-by opportunities for malicious actors, that's an excellent step. If you can go through and pattern your entire organization and say, hey, why do we have 3389 open? Why do we have 636 open? Why is LDAP exposed to the internet? Probably shouldn't be there, right? There are very minimal things that we can go through and do to increase security so that we don't look like a target of opportunity in regards to the business community. So it's something where if you can take the open source tools and the methodologies and even some of the trainings that we do, Curious does, Joe Gray does, all the other people who are in the community, um, even just joining the Discord to go through and learn more about what you can do is very helpful. But again, start small and start bite size. You can always scale up in regards to your output, but you can't go back and say, well, I'm going to go through and find out who the, uh, where flight uh, was it, 437 or M37 or whatever that, that fell over in, in Ukraine because of a missile hit it. You, know? uh, you can't go through and do that. You're, you're not going to be able to go through and scale that. It's not going to be a successful thing. Uh, one thing that I always encourage people is if you are serious about trying to open up a, a line or a, a, a business unit or a, an OSINT cell, essentially, where we're inside your organization, talk to your leadership. First, find out if you can go through and carve out the time, because if you do it off hours, that's fine. You can do that for personal, but I wouldn't go through and let your company steal your, your, your personal time for that stuff. Uh, but find out what they actually want to go through and have solved. They may have a supply chain issue, and you can go through and look at that for business intelligence, or they may have competitive analysis that they want done. That's all part of open source intelligence. If I can go through and tell you the comparative analysis between Aldi's and Hy-V, it may not be super attractive to a lot of people, but it is damn near bottom dollar things that, that, will, that will help. Hy-V is now a $13 billion company, whatever, in seven states. So if you want to go through and say what Aldi is doing better than them, it's probably something that will stand up and, and take notice of, right? Hi, Nate. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so again, this was a real quick kind of 20-minute talk, whatever. So I, I really did want to go through and spend the last couple of minutes answering questions, if anybody had any. But the, the, the crux of the talk is really... Anybody has the opportunity to go through and start learning, start training, and start doing a single focus in regards to open source intelligence, gathering the information, taking it and resolving it through critical analysis, and producing something, right? You have to produce something for your stakeholders for them to go through and stand up and take notice. You can go through and spend $19,000 on a product or whatever that will help you automate some of that stuff, but the point of this is to go through and go with shoestring budgets. So maybe a couple APIs, maybe a free version of Spiderfoot, maybe something else that you're actually looking to do. Uh, and then have a desired result, right? And you can always pair up 
the findings. You can always get more fidelity in regards to what you're finding, or you can add on layers of things. So again, if you're talking about um, supply chain management, you can find out who the vendors are and where the shipping routes are kind of taking place. That's a huge thing right now. Um, even if you were to go through and give a daily or weekly update in regards to the ports that are closed in China and in the U.S., if you actually have uh, supply chains that go that way, uh, that would be a huge thing because then you're putting that information in front of them and saying, hey, are you aware that our main supplier out of uh, Shanghai, whatever, is on a three-month delay because their boat is just sitting in the port and they haven't been able to go through and unload and reload? Maybe we want to talk about that in regards to finding alternative streams of X widget, whatever it is, right? Um, it's always going to be about answering a question, but then producing a result in regards to something that is um, actually efficient. Something that actually will go through and help move the product either forward, uh, we'll go through and get it out of harm's way, left a bang, we like to say, or it will go through and give us insights into something that they weren't originally thinking about. Uh, that's kind of about it. The open source intelligence village is right down the road here. I'm happy to go through and answer any questions if you don't want to talk about questions here. We also have a CTF, uh, so we'll be doing a lot of that stuff. Uh, I'm also local, so if you ever want to uh, ping me, I'm, I'm here in Kansas City. Um, Eric knows how to get a hold of me. Twitter knows how to get a hold of me. LinkedIn knows how to get a hold of me, so it's all good there. Uh, I don't have a bad signal yet, but that's working. Um, what questions do you guys have, or is there anything I can answer in the last five minutes of what we have here for kind of this village talk here? What's up? Would you mind sharing a lesson learned from your successes in setting up the program and possibly a failure from setting up that program? Sure, yeah. Uh, failure I'll start with because I, I like failures. Failures are very easy to go through and identify and then uh, learn from. And failure is a big one with this overscope. Like, I want to go through and do the moon and the stars. I know, like, Nate and I originally, before I even started with this company, we had an idea to go through and do an open source project called Dossier, which eventually moved to something else, however, that we got to go through and do. But the scale and the scope and the people we had involved were not to the point where we could actually get it done with just us. Right? We had multiple people that we were trying to get into the project. We had really big ideas. I had shit at code, still am. Um, but I was the guy who was giving the ideas, and I was like, oh, I can just push all this stuff through. But it wasn't, it wasn't achievable, right? You, if you have 10 different things, and you can only go through and do one in a week, you know, you just got to scale back. We, uh, now in, um, in complex, we call it uh, above the green line. You have all these great ideas, but you have to go through and draw a line that delineates what you're going to get done and what are future 2.0 updates and things like that. Um, in regards to successes, like I said, we've done some amazing things for other companies uh, in regards to what we've done. Like I said, there was a, a high value target that we were looking at for a company um, and they were a CFO of a company and we went through and scraped the page and found out that they took their own photo with their own iPhone inside their own house and we could actually geolocate to their kitchen where they took that photo, which was a lot of fun for us. Um, they didn't scrub any of the metadata, any of the exit data, any of that stuff, whatever. They just put it online. So a lot of people are scraping that, and then she becomes a target of opportunity because now it's a physical threat, right? So there's a lot of stuff that we can get into like that. Uh, any other questions? Good? Everyone what, else knows everything? What time is the OSINT CTF? Good question. From noon to four. So I know there's like 75 CTFs today. <laughs> uh, ours is pretty basic. It's very entry level. It should not go through and give it uh, any, any sort of panic attack or anything. It also requires nothing more than a browser, essentially, to go through and kind of do this stuff. Um, you may be able, if you have questions, we're, we're there to go through and help and give, uh, give pointers. It's hosted on CTFD, which is a pretty, pretty good platform and all that. Um, but yeah, the, there are prizes for the top three. So, you know, play, play with what you want. Did you have a question there? Anybody else? No? Okay, good. Could you tell us a little bit more about OSIN jobs? Sure, yeah, sorry. If for some reason you don't have an opportunity or if you're done with the company that you're working with and you really want to migrate to an actual uh, position in cyber that does focus on open source intelligence, uh, Laurent Bardo, who was part of OSINT Curious at one time, actually just came out with this about a year ago, and it's OSINT-jobs.com, or there might also, he might own OSINT-jobs.com. Uh, it is hand-picked, uh, it is not scraped, it's not auto-generated. These are all companies that work in open source intelligence in regards to business intelligence, national security, uh, or even, like I said, competitive uh, analysis. There was somebody um, who used to come to B-Sides Kansas City, I don't know if she's here now, she worked for AMC, 
And her job was to go through and check the internet for anything that had like an AMC badge on it or an AMC shirt, especially if it was like porn related, then they could go through and try to get that stuff taken down because that's brand monitoring. And that's all part of uh, open source intelligence. It's just the visibility in regards to all that stuff there. So yeah, OSINT, jo OSINT dash jobs is for people that want to go through and move into a full-time career for this stuff. Uh, OSINT curious, like I said, we have a lot of 10 minute tips. We have a lot of blogs. We have a lot of other um, you know, trainings and things like that that can help with that. Um, that's pretty much my time. And somebody else has the last question. What kind of training and or um, certification so right now, because it's pretty new in regards to a field, I mean, we're really, for the cyber intelligence side, we're really less than 12 years old, I think. You know, pen testing and other things, AppSec, that's been around since the 80s in regards to some of the early stuff, right? Um, open source intelligence comes essentially from the military background. And it was essentially for gray literature and to go through and kind of look for troop movements. As everything gets interconnected and all this stuff, we developed a lot more robust systems to kind of look at that stuff. I will say you don't need anything. Like when we hire people at Complex, we don't care if you have certificates, we don't care if you have a, a college degree. If you have passion and you're looking to go through and do this stuff and you can be responsible and you show up and you get the fucking job done, then we can teach you damn near anything in regards to it. But if you want a leg up, if you want to go through and have a solid foundation, SANS does some really good courses. They're like $10,000 of course. Um, but SANS 487 is the intro for OSINT, and you can get a certificate called the GOSI. Uh, it's the GACI Open Source Intelligence Badge. Um, there's, a, there's an additional one called uh, SANS 587 that just came out. It's for advanced uh, open source intelligence stuff. Uh, and then there are other people, myself, I do training here locally in Kansas City, so if you're a company that wants to go through and have me come out, I'm happy to do a full day or a full week. Uh, Joe Gray does some amazing online stuff. Um, OSINT Curious has a Discord, and there are a lot of places where we do uh, post trainings, or we will actually go through and do trainings virtually. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, please uh, reach out to me either in the village or OSINT or on Twitter, and I'm, I'm happy to go through and get you a list of people that do really good stuff. And I would say there are some people who teach OSINT but don't know OSINT, so it's really tough to go through and delineate between the people who are selling you a, a good service versus, you know, the right service. So I, I have my own opinions about that. There's gurus everywhere, right? I will always say that I'm continuing to learn because you can't know everything, so I don't know that I ever consider myself a guru. So anyone who wears that title, beware, right? I think that's about it. Anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns, anything I missed? Good, 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 good. All right, I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.